Hello, this is Tim Winders. I just wanted to share a message with you today that's meant a great deal to me in my walk as a, I like to use the term follower of Christ. And uh, I appreciate this opportunity to share with you because I always love sharing wisdom or things that I've learned over the years. I do want to kind of give a real quick background. I have, I've been a follower of Christ now for 30 years. I was actually saved or came to know Christ at a business conference of all things. So my perspective sometimes is a little bit different. I wasn't actually in a church setting, which kind of leads to something that I want to talk about and kind of share some scripture with you today, which is basically this. I'm, I'm going to talk about relationship versus religion. Because I know many times over the years, I would get real confused by, by, I guess, the structure of church and things that I needed to be doing within a church type setting or a religious setting. And I didn't quite understand the need to have a relationship with God, a relationship with God through Christ. And so I just want to share a little bit about that with you. I believe this is kind of basic follower of Christ stuff. And I also have found just in my interaction with people for almost 30 plus years as a follower of Christ that this is kind of the message that a lot of people maybe miss at times or don't fully understand. So I just encourage you, listen, first of all, you are invited to have a relationship with a loving father that created you is the reason he sent his son Christ to die on the cross so that we could have that reconnection, that relationship. And so what I want to do is I want to read from the book of Romans and talk about some scriptures there so that we can maybe make this point with some scripture, not just me saying it, but, but make the point of it. And involved with this is one of my favorite scriptures. I've always gone to this scripture, sometimes maybe not fully understanding it, but it really starts, we're going to be in the book of Romans. And I want you to keep in mind, the book of Romans was written by the apostle Paul, who had been Saul, of Saul, who was unfortunately kind of a bad dude in uh, right around a few years after the, um, uh, the, the cross and the resurrection of Christ. He was out killing Christians. Let's just call it like it is, because he was a zealot. He was, he was of the Jewish culture. He was very well educated and knew uh, knew quite a bit of scripture, and and uh, and so he was out trying to kill these people that were claiming that the Messiah had come, and so so I think it's important to recognize that when we read this, because this was a guy that just a few years before had been out killing followers of Christ, and now he's going to talk about this message. So I'm going to start, and if you're following along, I'd love for you to pull out. Uh, the book of Romans in the New Testament. It's a great book to read. If you're a newer follower of Christ, it's a great start to just kind of read through it and, and just let it marinate and, and learn from it and learn from what Paul taught. And, uh, and, and if you're a, an experienced or, or, a, or a Christian or a follower of Christ that's been, been in the Word and following for years and years, Romans is always good to go back to because to me, it's kind of like follower of Christ 101. So let's start in Romans 8, 28. That's Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now I'm in, I'm reading in New King James. So if you're in King James, it might be a little bit uh, fluffier wording. Or if you're reading in one of the other translations or versions, it might say something different. But listen, I call on this scripture all the time. And at the time I'm recording this, it's late spring of 2020, and the world is in the midst of a pandemic. A lot of people are on lockdown. And you know what I do is I go to this scripture and I say, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Now, one thing that gets people a little bit tripped up is that called according to his purpose. I'm going to skip a few verses here, but there's some things here that make people think that, that there are certain people predestined to be saved. And I do believe that God has, has some foreknowledge of that, but it still comes down to we get to choose if we are going to be what's called here, those who love God. You get to make that choice. And I'm going to, if you follow along with me, I'll, I'll, I'll make that more clear as we go, go farther down. I'm going to skip down to 31. 
That's Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, there's some teaching and some religious thoughts out there that God is out to get us, that he's a mean God or, or vengeant God, you know, God with vengeance, and that he's out to get us. Well, you know, that contradicts the scripture right here. It says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then he goes on to say in verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, he sent his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That does not sound like mean God, uh, God with vengeance to me. That sounds like a God that loves us and wants the best for us. And it's the reason that he sent his son, Christ, so that he could take all of our sins and everything on the cross so that we could be reconnected with him. So uh, let's see, I'm going to go on down a little bit further to verse 35. And listen, I encourage you, I'm not skipping around to pluck things out here. I encourage you to get Romans 8 and read it, study it, meditate on it. Let the Holy Spirit give you wisdom. Don't take Tim's word for it. Don't take my word. You study it out. I'm just making some points to get you thinking about it so that you'll dig down and study it for yourself. So it goes on down in, in Romans 8.35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And listen to this list here. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And, and then it goes on down. I'm going to skip, skip to 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, capital him, that means Christ, who loved us, or, cap, or, or capital him, God. So I, I want to just pause here. Paul is basically listing out anything that could come against us, including at the time I'm recording this, a virus or sickness or illness, all of those things, peril, sword, famine, nakedness, distress, persecution, all of those things, we are more than conquerors. What that means is because of what God did by sending his son on the cross, taking all of those things on our behalf, we have conquered them by being a follower, a believer, a lover of God, then we have conquered all of those things. How cool is that? That's awesome. But wait, let's keep going. There's more. That was verse 37. Verse 38, this is Paul talking here. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, <laughs> wait, it keeps going, this is 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What Paul, to me, is saying here is that when we claim that position by being a follower of Christ, that position that we have, that all we really have to do is accept it and receive it, then nothing, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, past or present, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. That, to me, is part of the great news of what happened on the cross. And, and listen, let me take it one step further. In that last verse, Romans 8, 39, where he says, nor other created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God. One thing I wrote in my Bible here years ago, probably, was where it says us, I said, put your name here. So let me read it. Nothing shall be able to separate Tim from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Whatever your name is, put your name there. What that means is none of those things can separate you out. That is the difference between relationship. Do I believe that we should have fellowship and go to church and be part of a body? Yes, absolutely we should. But sometimes, I used to have challenges with this, sometimes church people and Christians can be meaner than some people out there in the world. And that can, I think it causes issues for us. Well, you know what Paul says right here? Nothing, none of that 
separates us from the relationship that we have because of what Christ did on the cross. I'm going to read the first and last scripture again, and then we're done. But I encourage you, you have the ability to have relationship with the creator of the universe, God, your loving heavenly father. I think this Romans 8, 28 down to 39 shows that. And you have the ability to sit down and converse and communicate because of what happened on the cross. So do it. Don't listen to me necessarily. You don't have to go out, listen to all the preachers or anything. You can, there's nothing wrong with it, but you have that opportunity because Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. And then down to Romans 8, 39, nothing shall be able to separate you or us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. How awesome is that news? And that's kind of shouting stuff. I, I was in some Pentecostal churches for a little while. That's shouting stuff. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I encourage you to dig in on your own. This has been Tim Winders of the Seek, Go, Create podcast. And I was just trying to give you a tool to help you walk the talk.